Do you play guitar? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Welcome to McDonald's. May I help you? Do you like fries, pickles, onions, cheese? Do you like a Burger King hat? Thank you. 
about I don't even know where that came from uh, yeah Oh, it looks like, uh, looks like it's raining. Yeah. I think it's raining. Well, I can't stop the rain. And I don't care if it gives you any pain. I got nothing to rhyme with that. Antonio Scarface. How's it going? I have no idea why I went live, but I figured why not? Uh, I have nothing else to do. Uh, maybe that's a good thing. You too, man. I'm just trying to make up a song as I go along. That rhymed. I'm making up a song today. I got nothing really to say. If you like it, you can pay. A quarter. Anybody else play guitar, music, any any type of uh, instrumental situational system? Anybody like to play guitar? Uh, anybody fish? No, what? Nada? Where do you fish? Fish at local lakes? Oh, in the ocean, you're lucky. Oh, Pacific. 
Uh, well, yeah, I can tell you, uh, yeah, the Pacific Ocean, that's kind of where I'm from. And I got to be honest, I really kind of miss it. Oh, you need to hit the Gulf, yeah. Well, I tell you a story about uh, years ago. Uh, me and my brother fished out at, uh, I don't know if you heard of uh, uh, Catalina Island or Coronado Islands in California. Went out there fishing on one of the cattle boats. And uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, you're probably up north a little, huh? So listen to this. So we're fishing up there. Oh, outside. I know ocean side. Um, what are you in the service? In the military? In the military out there? Because uh, I know it's a huge military town. Oh, dad, dad retired. And settled there. Cool. Are you retired? Or you just moved there? Oh, oh, you're a young guy. And we're all young. What's age anyway? Who cares? But uh, hey, the uh, we were fishing out there uh, in Coronado. Oh, yeah, Detroit. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to. I don't know about Detroit. I don't know if I'd want to be in Detroit. Uh, I've seen pictures of Detroit. Some of the places seem kind of nice. Never been to Detroit, though. See, they'd eat me alive there. I'm in North Carolina. It's hard enough out here. GM, but I remember uh, out there fishing. There was a bunch of squid, giant squid, out there fishing out in Coronado. So if you're up in Oceanside, you know all about Ocean Beach, Pacific Beach, Mission Beach, La Jolla. Wow. Yeah, because that's where I'm from. I'm from Ocean Beach. Or OB, they call it OB. Yeah, I'm from, I don't know if you've ever been to Ocean Beach, but I was born in OB. Didn't have much to say, but everything was free. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm an Obetian, Obetian, uh, <laughs> You're either going to love it or hate it. The good things about North Carolina are good fishing uh, at the lakes. Uh, it's not too cheap. It's kind of quiet here. Uh, it's pretty, uh, I guess it's a pretty laid back place. Yes, I mean, it's veteran friendly, supposedly. I was in the Marines, so I ended up here, but I lived out in California. I uh, worked as an electrician all up and down the coast there, off the five, off the eight freeway. And uh, then I moved here about almost 20 years ago. And I really haven't been able to get myself out of here. Um, <clears throat> I do have friends that are still out there. One of them's up in Santee. I don't know if you know where Santee is. But yeah, I was born, born and raised in Ocean Beach. Uh, OB. Santee. Yeah. Yeah. We had some crazy times out there, too. But, uh, 
Uh, when am I going to come visit? I don't know. I have a lot of friends that ask me, keep saying, dude, when are you coming back? Uh, I would have to get on a plane. I got a couple of cars out here, so I'll probably, uh, I mean, you know, the weird thing is when you get older, I've already made a lot of, I made a lot of mistakes like we all do, but I also uh, did made some good decisions. But at this point, um, you know, sometimes I see you have people hanging out on the wall in Ocean Beach, like doing what I'm doing, playing guitar. Sometimes I think that would be a, a pretty uh, fitting lifestyle for me at this point. Just sit there and play guitar, put a cup in front of me. Uh, but I do uh, did grow up surfing out there. Uh, the, the pier, you know where the pier is? Ocean Beach Pier. OB Pier. Yeah, I hear they're tearing it down. They tear that pier down and they're going to build another one for like 200 million bucks. Yeah, the pier, uh, the pier got trashed by all the storms, so <clears throat> I guess they had to do something. But yeah, that's my hometown. Uh, I think what I've learned is that you can take the person out of the town but you can't take the town out of the person. And yeah, it's way, 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 way too expensive. Um, I mean, they're bas basically all they're doing is just squeezing everybody out of there, you know. With, uh, I mean, prices are insane. Uh, crime is crazy. And... Uh, I think it was, I mean, it's always been kind of nuts. I mean, that kind of life down there, especially towards like PB, Pacific Beach. It's just, it's just a party lifestyle, really. I lived it. But, uh, dude, I'm 60 years old. How much more could I take? You know what I mean? If I stayed out there for... If I had kept living out there, I'd have probably been, I'd probably be dead by now. Uh, I've been a TJ, yeah. Been down there on Revolution, you know, Revolution, whatever that street is. You know what I'm talking about. The main, main strip down there in TJ, where you buy all kinds of stuff, hats and stuff. What else they got down there? Whoa. What they got down Oh, they got the poppers. Aren't they still doing poppers where you, you get like the tequila shots and they shove the tequila down your throat and shake your head? Yeah, I've had, I had quite a few. Uh, I had quite a few nights down there. And uh, uh, honestly, uh, I don't even know if I remember them. But that was probably in my 20s, you know, late 20s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Donkey Show. Yeah, I never went to one, but I, I've seen, I, I heard about them. Uh, never went and saw one. I usually would go down there with a couple friends of mine. Sometimes we go down surfing down there. Uh, did get caught with some cops down there a couple times. Um, and then they got us for all our Corona beer money. But other than that, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I did the rounds. That's probably why I left, you know, just too much of a good thing, I guess. Yeah, I remember. It was on the 163. That was back in, like, mid-90s, I think. Uh, dude, I was living there then, yeah. 
I was actually living up in, um, see, 93. Ninety-three. I think I was living in a place called Logan Heights. Yeah, but yeah, I remember. You know, the story of that guy uh, was that he was like a plumber or something, and uh, the uh, the dude lost his job. Oh, man, uh, he lost his job, and uh, they stole all his tools, and he just. He was at his wits end, and he just said, screw it, and went to the local armory and uh, stole the tank. <laughs> and he just started driving around. Yeah. I think I was working a lot back then, so I didn't really uh... – uh, I do remember one time up on the uh... – yeah, he got stuck, and then they – they opened up the hatch, took him out, I guess. I remember somebody up there at the checkpoint, up there at the, um, uh, I think it's an eight freeway. Is it five or eight? It was a five freeway going north. And a guy was going to uh, off himself. And all the, all the cars were just backed up. He was at the checkpoint up there. All the cars were backed up, and he was going to shoot himself or something. And then all of a sudden, uh, it was kind of sad, you know, but but nobody was, uh, yeah, nobody was helping him. They were yelling, do it, get it over with already. Was, you know, it was like rush hour. So back then, yeah, I mean, uh, I was so busy that it didn't, you know, stuff like that didn't really affect me. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was bad, not not cool. Yeah, but he, but then I, I think, uh, I don't know if he killed himself, but I just remember all the traffic uh, was diverted and all different. We all had to back up, go back down the uh, five. We had to go back down the five freeway and then turn around because uh, I lived in a place called Hemet up there, Hemet, California, Riverside County. Which, by the way, that place is pretty nuts, too. Him in California was, uh, <clears throat> that place was crazy. Yeah, I remember that, too. Heaven's Gate. Yeah, that was like 30 years ago. I mean, I, re I remember all that stuff. Uh, Heaven's Gate, uh, you know, even like, I mean, that was San Diego. You look. <laughs> you been up to Hemet? Oh, in Arizona. I've never lived in Arizona. I've lived in Nevada. Yeah. Yeah, Hemet was crazy. I mean, uh, I had a house. I bought a house out there, but it was it was just like party central. They did have a good place to go do karaoke, though. I like the karaoke. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah, from what I hear, it's mostly gangs that kind of took over. But weird story about Hemet is uh, back in the day, Hemet was like the place to be for retired people. So that place was like... It was like heaven, you know, and then probably I want to say like, so what happened was, so Riverside, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's probably like Flint, Michigan, but Riverside, uh, what happened back in the early 2000s um, is a lot of people went out, moved out there um, and then would work construction down off the five freeway, you know, different jobs which is what I did. So the property up in Riverside was really cheap. But then what happened was uh, the economy started to go down probably in, in 05. 
And so a lot of people start selling off all their property, but uh, also uh, Bank of America started giving out loans uh, to people that couldn't afford them. Um, and then those people that couldn't afford them, basically they were working construction. So when the construction died out, they just, everybody just, it was like a mass exodus out of Hemet. So out of Hemet and based in Temecula, Riverside County. So that's why Hemet kind of went down the toilet because just everything went to, went to shit out there. And uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I sold my property out there in 05 because uh, uh, the agent told me, he said, if you sell now, yeah. Oh, I'm sure it is, yeah. Yeah, Temecula. What's another place up there? Uh, some other places I worked back in the day, I'm trying to think. Murrieta? Yeah, Murrieta, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> I had some really, I had some jobs out there in that area working as an electrician, and I saw all kinds of weird stuff at night. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of crack and stuff going on at night. And this is like 20 years ago. Yeah, Mur Murrieta. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know, it's it's like it's it's really everywhere. And I, I was thinking about that. And it's really just because the economy for people like you know, your average Joe Blow is really sucks. So you end up having people that just yeah, you know, just like drink, smoke, do crack, whatever, because it's just it's just a way to deaden the pain, you know. So I, I remember uh, a lot of my friends kind of went down that road of just drinking all the time, and uh, some of them just died. I mean, you can only you can only abuse yourself so long, and then then you just go toast, you know. But yeah, that was, uh, I had some good times out there. I bought a Camaro and drove across country from there. Which was probably a good move. It caused me to really slow down my life, you know. Yeah. Oh, New England. How's New England? Is it nice? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember Barona. <clears throat> I used to go to Barona. I had a good time. Um, yeah, Barona. I used to go to, go to, they had that old commercial that said, my Barona. I remember that. I, I probably, I could, I mean, I could definitely go back out. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot um, uh, keeping me out here in North Carolina, except I, except uh, I've just made it my home, you know. And I've already lived out there. I mean, I kind of get it. But, yeah, I mean, the casinos, uh, yeah. It was Kenny Rogers. Was it Kenny Rogers doing the Barona Casino? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I remember going down there to Barona, but then I've also been to some other casinos out there in Vegas. And the one thing I noticed, <clears throat> it's like, I don't know what it is about little old ladies, but they seem to get, they seem to really figure stuff out because they would go sit in the casino for hours and play like 20 bucks, but get like 10 beers or 10 whatever, wine coolers or something. And then just back then, you could just sit there and smoke in the casino all day. I think they used to, they call them like blue hairs. 
it was kind of, I mean, it's, that's in this day and age, it, it's like, that's, that's, that's in, inappropriate to talk like that. You don't, you don't talk like that. Not if you're going to get anywhere, but I guess I, yeah, I think the Marines taught me to just call it how I see it, but they had a lot of blue, blue, that they call it blue haired ladies. They would just sit in the casino all day. And a lot of most of them just would sit there just to talk, just cackle back and forth. But they'd be they'd be hammered after about two hours. And they just keep playing the one hour bandit. Uh, I didn't I didn't serve that long, six years total in the Marines. And then uh, two years in Navy Reserves. I was kinda of, I'm kind of like slacker. Oh, Yahoo, Yahoo chat. Yeah. You met her, you met, you met her at, on Yahoo chat. I met my old lady at a bar. Go figure. 26 years ago. Met her at a bar in San Diego, in Ocean Beach. And now I don't drink anymore. The only thing I do is I hit my my uh, little views alto. You're gonna have to bury me with that. Uh, the bar in Ocean Beach was called the uh, you might have heard it, uh, Sunshine Factory down on Newport Street, one of the main main bars down there. Newport's the main street in Ocean Beach. I mean, I'm sure it's totally different now. Or it, I mean, it'd just be different for me, for me being there. Um, edibles. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember Brick by Brick. That was a club, wasn't it? That was a club, I think. We used to go to a club way back in the late 70s called Straight Ahead Sound. Yeah, brick by brick. I'm not even sure where it was. Um, I've been to a couple of clubs out there uh, by the Coronado Bridge, underneath the bridge, Barrio Logan. Oh yeah. Yeah, they they had yeah, brick by brick was off so sick close. Um so yeah, it was but it, that was, I don't know where, well, I know, I know you I know Sunset Cliffs well. I rolled a car off of there back in, the, in 1980. Uh, there's some, there's some uh, surf points out there that we used to surf when I was a kid. One's, uh, one of the places out there to surf is called Garbage, another place called Needles, another place called Sub Left, Inside, Outside. But yeah, brick by brick, I've heard of that place. That's uh, they also had another place called Hosey's. That was a bar. And another place called um, not Ho Dream Street. Dream Street. There were a lot of bands there. I met the guy from Doctor No, <clears throat> who was in. Uh, <clears throat> who played there at uh, Dream Street. That was back in late 80s.
You know a Dream Street? You heard of Dream Street? Yeah. I got a story about Dream Street. You gotta love this one. So this is probably late 80s, maybe 89. And there's a lot of Filipinos working there. So they, they uh, basically, I think they owned it. But me and my buddy went down to Dream Street. So we get down there and uh, and we knew the bartenders, you know, they knew who we were. We're just like, you know, local knuckleheads. So we get down there and uh, my buddy, we start drinking and stuff. And then my buddy starts talking smack to one of the Filipino uh, bartenders. And, uh, yeah, she's telling, you know, she's like, you know, shut up, shut up, whatever. Well, and then, so he keeps on egging her on. The next thing you know, she throws a glass across the bar and one of them big old beer mugs. And I'm sitting there next to him. And I probably wasn't, I mean, I don't, I don't normally talk smack like that, especially to women. I don't, that's not really my nature. But my buddy doesn't really, he didn't really care. Um, so, you know, so we're together there. And she throws a big, bar glass across the thing and it hits me in the side of the cheek and uh my cheek split wide open so when my cheek split open i was like just started bleeding all over the bar and, and uh my buddy's like oh sh dude i don't know what we're gonna do man and he said oh wait let's go back to my house and, and uh he said i'll stitch you up because it my cheek was wide open so I'm like, no, nah, no way, man. So I ended up going to the hospital and they stitched me up, got 17 stitches. And that was all at Dream Street. So that was like a little story at Dream Street. But it gets even weirder because so North Carolina here is like, this is like the city of medicine, right? So I go, uh, this is a few years ago. I go down, yeah, I go down to the hospital here. Uh, I started feeling, this is like 20 something years later. I start feeling something coming out of my cheek. And I was like, what is this? I go down to the doctor. Doctor's like, I don't know what it is. I think it's like a fistula or something. And uh, I didn't even know what a fistula was. But um, so, then the thing, whatever's in my cheek starts coming out, right? And it's coming out, of, it's coming out, it's like pushing itself out and my cheek had swollen up. And I went to the VA doctor and the VA doctor basically, lady sat me down, takes these pliers and basically starts tugging on whatever's coming out. And it was like a one inch piece of glass that was like shaped in a triangle. And it was stuck in my cheek for over 20 years from that Dream Street thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a little story from uh, back in 1989 at Dream Street. Crazy. No, totally true, man. Yeah. They said that was the first time they ever seen anything like that. Big old pe it was all in the bone too, because it'd been there so long in my cheek. They said they ain't never seen nothing like that. And I owe it all the Dream Street. So if I was back there now, uh, that place would eat me up. Uh, yeah, I got a scar on the side of my face, but it's it's kind of healed up pretty good. At this point, I don't really care. I mean, who am I trying to impress? My old lady's friends? No. No. No, I just, uh, just, just part of, part of what happens, I guess. You know? But yeah. I definitely miss San Diego. Uh, I miss my friends out there. You know, just um, people I know, you know, 
in the the south is much different it's more uh it's it's slow out here everything moves at a snail's pace and it's not really like it's not really exciting there's no like you're not gonna find like a bunch of bars i mean you got a couple of bars and stuff but i don't drink so and i and i don't really gamble anymore or do any of that stuff so i just kind of uh i just fish out here but yeah san diego i know tons of people out there uh from my surfing days uh they do a lot of them do ask me to come out but i just i don't know i mean uh i probably could but uh, i did go about 10 years ago went back out to san diego stayed with some uh people that my my uh better half knows and um what were they doing oh a lot of them are just selling drugs you know because the economy sucks some are selling weed some are turning weed into hash so i just uh i didn't really uh i didn't get too good of a feeling last time i was there uh my brother's uh ex dea you know so not that it matters but they were kind of joking me about that don't tell your brother <laughs> don't tell, I'll tell your brother i'm selling hash out of my house So yeah, the old days of Dream Street, Dream Street, I miss you, I miss you throwing stuff at me in the bar, I love Dream Street, I miss you. Maybe I'll come back to you someday. I love Green Street it's so fun. Like to get so hammered out of my skull. Like the leaves that sell me alcohol. The body shop, uh, wow. The body shop is down there off of Sports Arena Boulevard. And, uh, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. Because I got another story about the body shop, too. But back in, back in the 80s. Yeah. The body shop. Uh, that was right across the street from Lay Girls. So, uh, yeah, this is not, not a huge story. I mean, nothing bad happened. But uh, I just remember going there. Um, I had a friend of mine that, that he drove a Jetta back in the day. And we both uh, had jobs at SeaWorld. So we were both just working as cooks there. And uh, he wanted, he would always want to come over to my place and say, Dave, let's go over to, to uh, let's go look at some girls. And um, we went to the uh, body shop and you know how you go in the body shop and there's like the front, there's a little front room there. It's kind of like, I think they have like, they sell stuff, novelty stuff, not novelty, maybe like adult stuff. But once you go into the theater itself, because the body shop, um, it's a strip club. But I don't know if it, is it a strip club or is it a theater? I'm not sure. But I just remember that you'd always see some dudes just sitting there in the dark. And, uh, and then uh, when you walk out, of the theater, you got to be really careful not to slip. You know what I mean? 
because it was pretty disgusting. But the body shop, Lay Girls was actually, yeah, Lay Girls was actually, um, God, that's been so long. Lay Girls, is that Lay Girls still there? You know? Yeah, that's pretty disgusting. Yeah. I, I definitely, uh, yeah, I've definitely been there a few times back in my younger years. Yeah, I would think that place, I mean, that place is so old. That, and you know what that was? It's just, it's just a, it was a place for all the, the sailors and stuff to go, you know, jerk off to. That's all it was. Back, back in the day, they used to have a pretty cool arcade. Um, on, I think it was Nimitz Boulevard. So Nimitz Boulevard used to have a pretty cool, pretty cool arcade. We used to go and play like Galaga, Donkey Kong, all them games from like the 80s, early 80s. But the games are like full size consoles, you know. Yeah, that that was that was like a, that was actually, that was actually a good time, you know. I mean that I mean life was kind of simple. It wasn't like there wasn't a lot of hate going on. People were pretty chill. You know, you you could go to the you could go to them places and not worry about getting shot or, you know, I mean, um, yeah, it was really cool back, especially back in like the mid eighties and just seemed more chill down there. Uh, but you know, like anything, I mean, it's always, there's always been shady stuff going on. You know, you just got, it's almost like to get through it all, you have to kind of be an alcoholic so you can laugh about it. But, and I did. I mean, I drank a lot. My friends drank a lot and partied a lot down there. There's another club down there, too, that my buddy used to go all the time. He'd just get totally ripped and then he'd just drive home just drunk, you know. I, but see, if I went back there, uh, it would just be to visit. I would just basically go back just to look at the ocean, you know. And it was one of the reasons I left was because it was, um, it just wasn't a very healthy environment. You know, I mean, for me personally, just to get totally hammered every day and then, you know, go, go back, back to work. But you're up in Oceanside. So Oceanside is, uh, I don't know. I, I surfed Oceanside when I was up there about 10 years ago. Went up there, took a longboard out. Just kind of floated around, paddled around. Anybody got any stories? Yeah, Oceanside. You still have a lot of crazy stuff going on? Ocean slime, yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The girls there are, uh, are a lot nicer than the ones out here. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. 
They still got like the MS-13 and stuff out there. MS-13, is aren't they out of Oceanside? I don't know. outfits this Samoan gangs yeah they tear me up man I couldn't deal with it yeah I'll bet Well, Ocean Beach was some pretty sketchy stuff. Even back 30 years ago, it was pretty sketchy. There was always sketchy stuff going on. All right, go ahead. Scare me. GTO. Yeah, I bet. Just waiting. Oh, the cop took off? Oh, did you get nailed? What'd you What'd you guys get? Just a ticket? Did you go to jail? What did they do to you?
So what happened? Ah. Yeah, that would suck. Wow. Yeah, my car has got like, I don't even know, like 180 horsepower. But it's a Chevy Tracker. Chevy Tracker doesn't go too fast. But it does run. I did have a Camaro though. <clears throat> I bought a ninety-eight a ninety-eight Camaro. Drove that across country, and that thing it wasn't too fast though. So. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta scale down, man. Once you get past like forty years old, uh, yeah. Once you get past forty, you're like, uh. Nobody cares. You know, that's like that's like the 40-year-old dude going into a bar with a backwards hat on, talking to 25-year-old girls. You know, it's like I I realized that. I was like, you know, it's over, dude. Forget that stuff, man. It's over. Plus, it costs you too much money. I mean, and, and like, like, why would you even want to bother? You know, there's too much energy. Don't get me wrong. It was fun while it lasted. But I don't think I want to go back to that. Uh -huh. If they look at you like, I mean, they look at me like, What's the old dude doing here? Especially you got the backwards hat on. My friend is my friend is just like that. He's like he he would not even he would not even think twice to go to into a bar with a backwards hat at 60 years old and think he was the coolest thing at the bar. I mean, he did it when we were 40, so I'm sure he's probably still doing it. But yeah, you got to have the thing. 
the thing is, you have to have, if you're going to go into a bar, uh, and if you're like middle aged, you know, if like you don't say you're born before 1980, you have to wear the backwards hat. Yeah, I'm in bed at like 8.30. I don't even, uh, yeah, and, and plus I'm out here in North Carolina. It's like, what are you going to, where are you going to go? What kind of work? Oh, nice. You're not at Verona, are you? Oh, wow. That's cool, man. But not at Verona? My Verona! Oh, Saquon. Never gonna stop. Give it up. Such a pretty... Yeah, Verona. I'm trying to think of the old Verona commercial. I think it was uh, was it Kenny Rogers? Uh, I'm looking. Yeah, 1997 Verona. My, 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 my Verona. Da, da, da. God. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know what they say, though, you know, if the glove don't fit. Yeah, OJ died. OJ. OJ died today. No more OJ for you. OJ died away and away. think with my 60 years of experience in this wacky world uh, I would think uh, maybe he knew about it but he didn't do it you know what I'm saying I think he might have hired somebody to do it And and, uh, and and what was the reason that he would do it? I mean, was it about money? 
or was it about, about jealousy? You know, that's what I don't really understand. Because he, because the other dude, Ronald Goldman, he died too. So what I would think it was probably a hit on the two. But in the end, only OJ knew. I think he was probably jealous. I think he was. I think OJ was probably jealous. Might have hired somebody and then uh, probably paid him off some money. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Sometimes my brain just comes up with some really off the wall. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. My my brain does some weird stuff sometimes. Sometimes I can come up with a song right off right off the top of my head, but then other things I try to do, it's like it's impossible. So playing, yeah. So you think the Ronald Goldman was at the wrong place at the wrong time? Yeah, it kind of feels like my life a lot of times. I seem to have always end up at the wrong place at the wrong time. So sometimes it's uh, better for me to just stay put and stay in my house instead of going out. I go to the store, they hit me up for money. I go to the lake, they hit me up for money. Um... Even my wife hits me up for money. And I just sit there and smile. Because I don't really care. As long as I have no hair. And I don't look like a bear. Yeah, you charge like two bucks. It's like this... Uh, full-on uh, country lady uh, that runs the place out there. And, she, and every time I walk in there, it's like, she looks at me and says, give me money. Give me money. I want your money. <laughs> kind of like joking, but at the same time, I'm like, what do you think? I made a money lady? But no, in all honesty, I mean, um, uh, they have to maintain the lakes, you know, so uh, they, you know, like North Carolina, if you come out here, this is like the land of the lawnmower, you know, it's like, there's so much grass. Um, my, uh, my better half's mom came out and looked around and just shook her head like, oh my God, look at all the trees. Oh my God, where's the mall? You see what I mean? But for me, I just get into my car and I drive very far and I get to the lake and then the lady takes all my money, you see? Because there's always a fee to fish, you see? And I smile and I say, okay, here's my cash. Just put it in your stash. She looks at me with no teeth, you see, and she takes my money. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's everywhere you go. There's somebody trying to hit you up for money, man. But out here, it's just lawnmowers. Bass mostly, bluegill, or uh, they, they're like bluegill, but they're actually called uh, brim. Uh, yeah, brim, bluegill, uh, not so much bluegill. Brim, uh, mudcats, um, uh, channel catfish, blue catfish, uh, bat, a lot of bass, largemouth bass white bass but the thing is is out here and i don't know if it's here or it's everywhere 
But I wouldn't eat the fish out of the lakes because they got too much mercury in them. Those the lakes, the lakes are like polluted. It's not even pollution, it's just it's just they got this slime, you know. Fish love it, but I think it's good for human consumption, man. You're better off eating Captain Crunch. I'm about 150 miles away. But even if I go out to the to out to the to the ocean, it's like even there they hit you up for money. So I'm like, what's the point? You know, they'll bury you alive. I don't do hurricanes. I try not to. Like right now, uh, right now it's not too bad, but uh, yeah, we got some rain coming here. Tomorrow, a little bit of rain, not much. Today, we got rain. And uh, tomorrow's Friday, so Friday's like... Got some light rain in the morning. Right now, tonight's got rain. I don't hunt. I chase squirrels around sometimes, but I don't hunt. I have a small gun, yeah. Hunting is, uh, some people hunt out here, uh, deer. So, I mean, but mostly it's mostly just fishing. A lot of people like go out, catch fish, take them home and eat them. Hey, how how expensive is, is Oceanside now? What's like what does it cost to live out there? You gotta have a lot of money. I got no money today. I need to get my pay. How much? Oh, I can't even see that. Three thousand a month. Wow. Yeah, you gotta be rich, man. <laughs> 
But see, you make more money out there too. There's more money and there's more uh there's more uh there's more resources out there, you know. Out here it's kind of like it's not what you know, it's who you know. So you can easily find yourself in trouble out here. Yeah. I know San Diego was, uh, I bought property out in Hemet. That property, well, I paid $12.75 a month on my mortgage. And uh, out here, you probably get double what you get out there for the same price. See, that's not too bad. 20 bucks an hour, what's that? How much is that a week? That's like 800 bucks a week. Then after taxes, you're probably looking at about 500 a week. Yeah. So that's, that's $2,000 a month just working at McDonald's. But then like anything, you gotta climb the ladder, you know? And I've already kind of been down them roads, so. Um, you know, when you get older, it's like nobody really wants to, nobody wants to hire you. And then you're too, you're too tired anyway. So I figured I'd just play guitar. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll just head out on the street out here, man. And start playing in the street. I mean, uh, if you, you move out to North Carolina, it's a lot cheaper. But it's also different. You know, it, it's like, like I said, it's like, it's not, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. I know a guy out here that stands in the street and, and uh, stands there every day, seven days a week, just stands there with a sign. And I don't know if he makes any money, but he just stands there with a sign and cars fly by him, but he just keeps standing there. I'm not sure how much money he makes, but if I went out in the street, I mean, I'm pretty well fed. People wouldn't give me any money. And uh, and to be honest, I mean, I don't need to do that. I don't need to go and, and panhandle, thank God. Not yet. Hopefully never, but never say never. San Diego, Horton Plaza was the place to hang out. We should go out to Horton Plaza and chill out in Horton Plaza. But even that, that place is kind of shady too. I heard that Horton Plaza got uh, shut, they shut it down. Uh, that's all good. Hey, I gotta make another song, man. Yeah, Horton Plaza. But you know, even Horton Plaza was all about the dollar bill, you know. Everything seems to be about the buck, you know. Yeah. 
Oh, thanks. I don't really notice because I because I don't really I don't watch them like you guys watch them. I'm just kind of like I just basically just do some random stuff. You know, it just keeps me occupied. I'm not really looking to to do anything or you know. I'm just a peanut. I'm a nobody in the YouTube world, man. But I do like, I, I do like, uh, it's something that's kind of fun. Besides, then I. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. I made, I made this stupid song today. made a song about a sandwich. I am William F. Atron. I can't. Oh, thanks, Bun Studio. William Anton Elf Afton Afton. Hey, man. I made a song about a san Subway sandwich. I don't even know. I just did it off the top of my head. So it's not really good. I just go to my YouTube and look at this look at uh, Subway I want a sandwich song. It's kind of ridiculous really. You just on my channel it just says Subway sandwich. I don't know what I was thinking. It made me start thinking maybe I should go to Subway sandwich and ask for a job. I need a sandwich. I'm playing that song. Uh. Yeah, it's already up. I put it on, I've already put it on my channel. Just look on my channel for a Subway Sandwich song. 
really ridiculous. Yeah, 30 years working for the man. What did it get me? It get me that garbage can to throw my trash away. Everybody says you're lucky. Everybody says. What does everybody say? I don't know. Yeah, I'm retired now. No, no more alarm clock, man. No. Nowhere to show up anymore. You'll get there. Well, I think I'm going to end this. Uh, but thanks for coming on to this, whatever this is. Appreciate you, man. Some good stories out of San Diego. And uh, maybe we'll, uh, maybe someday you come out North Carolina. We hook up and go fish, man. Hey, you too, man. All right, stay safe out no side, man. All right, later.